Artificial intelligence is constantly gaining more capabilities and transforms our world every day. More and more companies are interested in running their own AI models. This means that the demand for hardware capable of running AI workloads is constantly growing, while the supply is not always able to match up. This brings us to a situation where access to some accelerators like TPUs or GPUs is not always assured, especially for startups who may only need them occasionally and cannot afford to make longer-term commitments. To solve this problem, Google Cloud has introduced Dynamic Workload Scheduler, or DWS for short, a job scheduling platform designed for AI workloads. With its two modes of operation, Calendar and Flex Start, it integrates with a set of Google Cloud products like Compute, Kubernetes Engine, Vertex AI, Batch, and TPUs. In this video, I will explain how DWS integrates with those products and how to leverage its power to make hardware acquisition simpler. Let's start with Calendar Mode. Calendar Mode is really straightforward. It allows you to create a future reservation. This way you can tell Google Cloud that you'll need a given set of resources for a fixed duration. This approach is best suited for situations where the resources will be used consistently for a longer period of time, from multiple weeks to even months. It's great for ML training, proof of concepts, and periodic bursty inference needs in which the workload requires high assurance of capacity. When you submit your request for a future reservation, it will be reviewed and accepted if resources are available. And then we wait. Once the specified period starts, the system will create compute reservations in your project, matching the accepted request. Your hardware will be tightly packed for the lowest multi-node latency. From this point on, you can use those resources however you like. Compute Engine, Google Batch, GKE, and Vertex AI can all consume reserved resources. You can switch between the products or split resources between them. You are in control for the duration of the reservation. Just remember, you pay for those resources for the full time of the reservation, whether you use them or not. The second mode in which DWS helps you acquire resources is Flex Start mode. This mode is most helpful for bursty, spontaneous, shorter jobs that last up to 7 days. It's great for batch processing or offline inference. It also helps you run tasks that require a specific number of instances to start, like distributed training jobs. The idea behind this approach is that you let Google Cloud know what resources you need and for how long. Your request is then added to a queue and once the resources are available, they are delivered to your project all at once. A great benefit of this approach is that you only pay for the resources when you can use them. No need to slowly acquire a GPU after GPU, paying for them while you wait for the required number. So how can you utilize DWS in flex start mode in various products? If you want to use Compute Engine, create a managed instance group with auto-scaling and healing disabled. Then you create a resize request with specified running time. This will allow DWS to schedule your workload among other requests. If you use Cloud Console, this is done on a single config page. With the GCloud tool or APIs, this is divided into two steps, group creation and resize request. Things are simpler when it comes to batch. The system will automatically make use of DWS if your job definition meets the requirements like not using reservations, not using spot VMs, and being able to run in a single zone. Dynamic Workload Scheduler is available for bad jobs that make use of accelerators. Check our documentation to see which hardware is supported. Kubernetes Engine is one of the most popular solutions when it comes to AI-related workloads. You can enable Dynamic Workload Scheduler for some of your Kubernetes node pools by using the Enable Qt provisioning flag. Then you can schedule Kubernetes jobs to run on the node pools provisioned by DWS. It is important that you specify the maximum runtime for those jobs, as having this information enables DWS to manage its scheduling. In the case of Vertex AI, using DWS is as simple as just picking Flex Start as the scheduling strategy and deciding how long your job can wait for the resources. Exactly what I'd expect from a fully managed solution. Lastly, for the TPU enthusiasts who want to interact directly with their VMs, there is the Queued Resources interface. Although it's not part of the DWS platform, it works on a very similar basis. Like in the previous examples, 
you can specify the number of TPU machines you need and the system will make sure you get the whole set or nothing. As you can see, there are many ways to leverage the power of dynamic workload scheduler. From planning resource provisioning, through future reservations, to letting it take care of collecting the resources you need to start a one-off job. For every product, the interface, requirements and options are a bit different, so make sure to follow our documentation for the product you want to use. The world of AI computing is changing extremely fast. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss anything.